G'day cocktail lover, what can I get for you today? I heard it was absinthe day this week. I want to try an absinthe cocktail, but I'm kind of worried by all those stories about it being dangerous. Well, I'm here to reassure you, absinthe is no more dangerous than any other alcohol of a similar proof. And pretty much every story you've heard about it is bullshit. Then why was it banned for so long in almost all across the world? Hype mainly. Around late 19th, early 20th century, absinthe was very popular, particularly in bohemian circles where they developed whole rituals around how they drank it. And of course those bohemians, not savoury people, created a bit of a moral panic and it was like, this is the scourge of society. And there were just ridiculous stories spread about it, saying it's hallucinogenic, saying it drives people insane. It got blamed completely falsely for a couple of gruesome murders and then the campaign to have it banned picked up steam. You're telling me it isn't hallucinogenic? No more than any other alcohol. So why did so many people think it was hallucinogenic? Ugh, moral panics, they can be pretty wild. Once people get an idea into their heads, this is bad, they see evidence that this is bad even when there's no real evidence there. One particularly influential study that contributed to the bans around the world, this doctor, he force-fed mice pure wormwood oil, wormwood being a core ingredient in absinthe, and he forced these mice to consume pure wormwood oil. When the mice went into convulsions, he went, see, absinthe, bad. Even though force feeding mice pure wormwood oil tells you nothing about the effect drinking absinthe has on humans. And this got a banned? Nearly everywhere? No, yeah, pretty much the whole world. Absinthe was still being made in the Czech Republic and Spain in these worldwide bands, but it was impossible to get almost everywhere. Is Absinthe Day the anniversary of when Absinthe was first made? It's actually the anniversary of when it was made legal again in the United States in 2007. Almost a hundred years after the initial ban. For real, banned for pretty much a hundred years and the reasons were bullshit. Yep. Total bullshit. Now it is a very high alcohol spirit, so you should be cautious in your intake of it, but it is absolutely, categorically not hallucinogenic. Don't most absinthe cocktails only have a tiny amount of absinthe in them anyway? Yeah, it's quite common for cocktails to call for just an absinthe rinse in a glass, or maybe a bar spoon of absinthe, but it's absinthe day. I think we should go all out. Oh, what did you have in mind? While I rarely recommend shots, I think we should make an exception today. We're going to start with a shot created by Dick Bradsall called Hammer of the Gods. Gotta be honest, I'm feeling a little concerned. Maybe you should be. The serving suggestion for this shot is pretty out there. We are actually going to float the absinthe on top of some liqueur. I'm going to use this really special funnel my friend Abigail 3D printed for me that makes it easier to layer cocktails. Now, the original recipe called for a liqueur called Tuaka, which is pretty obscure. It's apparently a mix of brandy and vanilla and citrus. To approximate Tuaka, I'm going to go with 15 mils of brandy and 15 mils of liquor 43. Next, we are floating absinthe. I'm using this rather bright blue absinthe from Jacques Sureau. 80% alcohol, so that's going to come in handy because we want to set this on fire. 80% alcohol, kind of easy to set on fire. So once we have layered the shot, we will introduce the magic of fire to our shot. The original instructions said to hold a pint glass upside down over the burning absinthe to capture the alcohol vapor and then give the customer a bendy straw to stick inside there to suck it out. I am going to improvise and we have something clever. I've got this skull glass, it's actually like a skull mason jar. It has a lid, but there's a hole for a straw. So I'm going to capture the vapor in the glass, put the lid on and hand it to you. And now it's time to suck that down. Okay. Follow that up quickly with the shot and use the straw again because that shot glass lip is going to be quite hot and it's safer to drink it through the straw.
Oh neat! The shot kind of looks like the Ukrainian flag. Well, fuck Putin, I suppose. Quite a kick, yeah. Who? <gasps> what? Now let's do a cocktail and one with a serious amount of absinthe, not simply a rinse. This one's called an absinthe saucisse. Absinthe Swiss Miss? Absinthe saucisse. Absinthe Susus? It's absinthe Swiss. <laughs> let's just make the cocktail, okay? We're going to start one and a half ounces, 45 mils of our absinthe. Oh my god! Yeah, making quite the statement, isn't it? Apparently, popular brunch drink in New Orleans. Well, that's a hell of a thing to be drinking in the morning. That's certainly gonna wake you up. So, starting out into our shaker, because this is a shaken cocktail, one and a half ounces, 45 mils of absinthe. To that, we're going to add half an ounce, or 15 mils of green creme de menthe. You can use white creme de menthe. Uh, I'm putting the green and blue together. Should be an interesting color. We'll see how it comes out. The sweetener in this one is Orja, an almond-based sweetener. You often get this in tiki drinks. It's what we're using in this one. Again, half an ounce, 15 mils of Orja in our shaker. There's also cream in this drink. We're going with a full ounce or 30 mils of cream into the shaker now. The final touch is some orange blossom water, and we just want a dash of that. Uh, a little of this goes a long way, even with strong flavors like the absinthe and the creme de menthe. So don't go overboard in this, or it will make the whole thing a bit too flowery. So just a dash of orange flower water. An optional element is a foaming agent. You can use an egg white, aquafaba, I'm putting in about half a dozen drops of Wonder Foam, just to give it a nice frothy feel on the top. But that's all the ingredients, and because we want this foam, I'm going to do dry shake, then a wet shake. So, shake it together, bang it in hard, shake that really hard for 15, 20 seconds. We add ice to our shaker, put it together again, bang it in hard once more, another good solid shake for at least 15 seconds. You have a lot of flexibility with how you serve this one. I've just done a dirty dump into a nice glass so the ice is in there as well. But here you have your absinthe saucisse. All right. Ooh, that is a, that's an interesting milkshake right there. I think it's good to go with a serious amount of absinthe from time to time. <laughs> What is the matter? You're sure there are no hallucinogens in absinthe? I'm positive. So if I was seeing things? There are definitely no hallucinogens in absinthe. If you're seeing things, that's on you, buddy. So uh, nothing to do with me. Uh, ooh, I really hope you didn't have any of the mushroom pizza from the vendor outside. Wait, I had a slice of that. What type of mushrooms does he use? What? Nothing, no, nothing, nothing. It's, it's, it's normal. They, they just put normal, normal, absolutely normal mushrooms on the pizza. Nothing to worry about, uh, nothing to tell anyone about or file police reports. You just, you do you, buddy. You do you.